Good afternoon, everyone. So great to be here in person in Madison with such a wonderful bunch of talented and motivated people. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to talk about uh, a story about how we use containers to increase the accessibility and reproducibility of a neuroimaging pipeline. Um, but the takeaway is really this, uh, publishing a description of your computational environments is probably one of the best things you can do to increase the accessibility and reproducibility of your work. And a specification like this one seen here is concise enough to fit in the appendix of almost any publication. All right, let me back up a little bit. Um, I work in the FreeSurfer lab. Uh, FreeSurfer is a software that per performs a morphological analysis of MRI neuroimaging data. So you, you give it an MRI of a brain like the image seen on the left there, and it will segment and label all the various structures of the brain and <clears throat> provide you a bunch of statistics. Uh, the infant pipeline operates on subjects that are zero to 24 months old. And this is a particularly challenging population, not only due to the, to the morphological or shape changes uh, during that time period, but also uh, the, the axons undergo myelination during that time period, and that actually causes the MR contrast to invert. Um, anyway, this pipeline is a key tool in an ongoing collaboration between Massachusetts General Hospital and the University of Cape Town to study how uh, the, the gut microbiome and human milk oligosaccharides uh, mediate the effects of maternal HIV infection on the infant, uh, the development of the infant brain. Um, so the pipeline has a lot of dependencies. Uh, there's only a few of them listed here. There, there's many more. Um, so that makes replicating environments really challenging, you know, as the number of possible versions you can choose from increases, you know, the, the, the environment gets exponentially more difficult to replicate. Um, and that's where containers comes in. Containers is an, uh, an elegant solution to this problem. So you can um, specify your environment as a text file or what's called a Docker file, what's seen on the left here. And then you can use Docker to, to build environments, uh, to, to actually run and execute, uh, run the pipeline in that environment and easily share that uh, environment with collaborators. Now, Docker is a, a great tool for specifying environments, um, but it, it lacks an elegant way to kind of mix and match different components you know like um there's no concept of like include in docker right um so while like multi-stage builds kind of partially address this problem it would it would really simplify things if there was a if there was a nice tool to say oh i want this version of that software and this version of that software and build me a container with all that uh, that's where that's where neurodocker comes in neurodocker is a great open source tool to do exactly that um so you can run you can run that command you see on the left there uh, and, and specify the exact versions of the softwares you want. And it will actually create the Docker file that you see on the right that you can then use to build, run, and, and share your environments. And uh, if you go to the GitHub, you can see uh, a list of all the neuroimaging packages they support. <clears throat> uh, NeuroDesktop is another great open source tool. Um, it builds off the work of NeuroDocker. And what it does is it gives you a desktop environment that's uh, browser accessible um, with all your favorite neuroimaging tools. So, so on the left here, you can see uh, we're using Freeview, which is the, the GUI in FreeSurfer to inspect the outputs of the pipeline. And we're doing that all from inside a, a web browser. Uh, on the right, you can see some of the, uh, just a, a small set of the neuroimaging applications no desktop supports. And there's a little uh, <clears throat> terminal snippet for you to, to get up and running with uh, Neuro Desktop quickly. Uh, so, you know, this is only possible because of the thriving open source uh, neuroimaging community. Um, so I'd like to, you know, just thank everyone who contributed to those three repos there. My, <laughs> the, the, it was a very easy lift for me. I just had to provide a couple bits and pieces of glue to a couple of those repos to get everything to work. Um, there's more info there at that second, second link there on how we're using containers to increase the accessibility and reproducibility of this and other pipelines. Um, and I guess I'll end with a question, something I've been thinking about for a while now. Uh, 
you know, if, if, if we want to take reproducibility seriously and extend the time scales over which we're interested to like say 10, 20, 50, 100 years, um, I would love to be able to route the Docker daemon through a proxy that caches all the web traffic that occurs when you run Docker build, right? So, you know, when you run, when you run Docker build, there's all these web queries, it's pulling down Git repos, it's pulling down binaries. <clears throat> Those are eventually gonna go stale, right? So it'd be great if we could cache that and reproduce that later. Uh, I got the feeling that's like a really easy job for the right Unix wizard out there who knows how to do that. Uh, and if that's you, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. So now we take questions to the, the previous three lightning talks. Anyone has a question? Okay, uh, one line question is, um, is for, see, so this one is for a uh, person. Okay. Um, is, oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Um, is, is, oh yeah, I, I think this is not done one, uh, sorry. Um, so uh, can, I, can I have one question to Paul? Um, how do you manage the uh, the difference between the, the environment, like a uh, uh, computing environment, like GPU or CPU or, or the bad job environment with your Docker container? Yeah, right now we haven't really explored uh, GPU environments, but um, you know these uh, neuro Docker commands they all have a base image. So if you started with the base image of your your GPU container, that that should work, but uh, it, it's not something we've explored yet. Thank you. Okay. So, any questions? Okay. Yeah, actually, I got a question. This is maybe a little bit out of left field, but have you had users come to you and say, this is great? Could you do this with singularity? Yes, uh, <laughs> you, you can do it with singularity. Um, uh, no Docker supports building both uh, Docker and singularity containers. There's some things you need to look out for when using singularity. Uh, the, biggest, the biggest hurdle we encountered is singularity by default shares the temp folder uh, with the host environment, um, which in my opinion kind of defeats the whole purpose of containerization because now you've got this shared file system. So as long as you don't use the temp folder, everything should work pretty seamlessly between Docker and singularity. 